what is a Hispanic? You hear the term used quite a bit in the United States. When you're signing a census form, are you Hispanic? Are you African-American? Are you Asian? Well, what are we? Who are we? A Hispanic, if you look at the definition on Google, it's somebody from Latin America living in the United States. Somebody living in the United States who has a heritage from one of those countries. Too often people look at us as being one unit when it's the farthest thing from the truth. We're not one unit. We are a microcosm of different colors, different races, different ethnic compositions. For example, in Peru, you will find many Asians, Japanese, and in Guatemala, you'll find a large number of Koreans. A Hispanic can be Asian, can be black, can be white, any one of those. I happen to look like my mother who was from the Dominican Republic, who had blonde hair and green eyes. My father was very dark. My sister looks like him. When we're together, you must think there's a, some people think there's a stepfather in there somewhere. No, there isn't. Same mother, same father. That's how different we are. The other thing that people do not consider is the fact that there are many different countries in Latin America. I've had the good fortune of traveling to most Latin American countries. And I can tell you, they are very, very different. People think, well, they all should get along. They speak the same language. No, it's not the case. If you look, for example, at the history of Peru and Ecuador, they've been fighting with each other for years. There's a dispute over land where Peru, uh, Ecuadorians claim that Peru took some land that belonged to Ecuador, the US was involved, and there was even a three-day war uh, when I was going back and forth uh, from the US to Ecuador. And we don't all get along. Many of you remember Simon, Bo Simon Bolivar from history. He was a soldier whose goal was to liberate as many of the Latin American countries from Spanish rule. Once he accomplished his goal, he did assist with the independence of a number of countries, but he wanted to unite all of Latin America into almost like the United States of Latin America. He wanted a federal government. He wanted to unite, but was unable to do that. The reason he couldn't unite the, all the Latin American countries is there were too many local issues. The Andes, first of all, it's a big area. The Andes mountain divides a big part down Latin America. People live locally. And because they grew up, they survived, they lived in those areas, they develop certain customs that are different. Mexicans have different traditions than Peruvians than Ecuadorians. Caribbeans have a different mindset. Cubans have a different mindset. Argentines have a different mindset. They all think differently. We all think differently. So to look at us and say, you're Hispanic, it's all the same, it's not true. It can be Mexican, it can be Puerto Rican, Dominican, Cuban, you can be any of those. You can be black, you can be white, you can be Asian. That's what a Hispanic is. We, in a sense, make up the colors of the rainbow because we have a bit of everything. That diversity is really wonderful within the Hispanic community because I can tell you in traveling to many of these places, there are really neat things I liked about each country. But that same difference, that same ethnic difference, that same cultural difference is what has prevented us from uniting here in the United States as Hispanics. If you're in Mexico, you're Mexican, you're Mexican. But if you're in the US and you're living in the US and have been here for some time, you are a Hispanic of Mexican heritage. And eventually you will come to identify in some sorts the, with an American mindset. Maybe not, some people never do. 
that's the key, the key difference. When we are here and we're living here, we need to identify more the Hispanic group. At the same time, being proud of our heritage, but understanding that although we're different, we have to come together. And with 18% of a 300 million population, that's a lot of economic power. I've heard people say, yeah, the Hispanic community has a wide range of power, that there, there are many Hispanics in prominent locations. You've had Hispanic mayors, Hispanic congressmen. That doesn't mean we're still united. We still have a tendency to fight among ourselves and bicker among ourselves. That should stop. We need to look out after our interest as a group within this country. You know how sometimes you fight with your brother, your little brother, and you think, oh my God, I can't stand him. And you even maybe tumble around and mom and dad have to pull you apart. But the moment somebody down the street starts to pick on your neighbor, I mean, your neighbor starts to pick on your brother and you're gonna defend your brother. Why? Because you're family. We need to look at each other as family. Growing up in Lorain, Ohio, there was a large Hispanic population. At that time, as a young boy, we all seemed to be united. When I first went to New York to college and I saw some Puerto Ricans, I, hey, hi, my name is Rudy, I'm Puerto Rican too, I'm like big deal. And I thought, wow, this isn't the same reception I get in Lorraine, my hometown. And then I realized, well, maybe we're not as united as, as, as we can be. Why should we unite? Well, as a boy, I was a staunch Democrat. Later as an adult, I voted both parties depending on the candidate. I remember as I'm walking down the stairs to vote for the first time ever, my mother's yelling, don't forget to vote Democrat. Because I thought all Hispanics, all Latinos were Democrats. And when I saw somebody that was like Puerto Rican and he says, well, no, I'm a Republican. Well, how could you be a Republican? You're Hispanic. In high school, uh, 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 an older Puerto Rican man I, I liked said, Rudy, we can't just stay with one party. We have to be Democrats and we have to be Republicans. Some of us has to take one side or the other, but we still need to be united as Hispanic. And if we just choose on one side and stay there, then possibly every four years, we will be out of the loop. Democrats and Republicans are always courting the Hispanic vote, right? We should take advantage of that, shouldn't we? We need to also consider social issues that affect the Hispanic community. You've seen much complaining about the illegal immigrants coming in. I've seen newscasters uh, interview people who come from families who immigrated who are saying, oh my God, these people here should be kicked out. They came here illegally. When in fact, their families were immigrants into this United States. And I'd be willing to bet that some of their families came in across the border or, or came in on a plane and never came back. That's the mentality that I have mine and let's close the door, let's not let them in. Hispanic can do a lot to help the DACA children. There are hundreds and thousands of these children here. If you argue why they came here, if you argue that they shouldn't be here, you're never gonna find a solution for them. I had the good fortune of hosting a number of the DACA kids as they were walking 20 miles a day from Washington, to Washington, D.C. in protest, trying to get legislation passed to get the, the DACA children permanent status. Can you imagine what it's like for them living day by day, not knowing if they're gonna be able to stay here? Could you imagine a kid who's here, speaks no Spanish, and at 18, he's shipped back to a country to which he has no connection? As a group of Hispanics, we need to protect these children. 
we need to lobby both the Democrats and Republicans say, please legitimize this situation. Let's get them this path to the green card. Let's get them the path to citizenship. That only helps us. What does that mean? It means more voters. It means more people with economic clout. It means more taxes are being paid. It means these people don't have to live looking over their shoulder. It can only, by benefiting them, we benefit ourselves. I'm really bothered when I hear Hispanics, Latinos talk about these people here as undesirable. And I say to myself, who are you? There's an interesting song in a uh, Cuban song that says, um, I know who I am, but where's your grandmother? My grandmother sits in the living room. Your grandmother is in the kitchen. I know who I am. I know what I am. You are trying to hide who you are. And it's almost like they're ashamed. It's almost, nope, here I am. Keep those people away from me. That's very sad. It is very sad. The Hispanic community has an incredible amount of economic clout. And with that clout, we can have our qualified people sit on boards, have meaningful jobs, be a force to be reckoned with, an economic force to be reckoned with. But we cannot do that if we are not united. That's the whole key to this thing. We are not just one person. We are many people, but we've got to come together as one. We've got to realize that my Mexican brother here, my Cuban brother, my Dominican brother, although we come from different areas, we've got one goal in mind, and that's to, to better as best as we can within this, this country, our situation. Too often our votes have been courted and nothing happens. I've seen many candidates come into the Hispanic community. Oh, I promise this, I promise that. At the end of the day, nothing ever changes. It's not going to change if we don't make it so. That also means that Hispanics have to vote that we have to be very active at the polls, more than probably any other group. We've got to mobilize. And although some of us are better off than others, we all have the same goal. I believe in the social contract theory. I believe that any good fortune you have in this world, you must pay it forward to somebody. And those of us who are in more fortunate positions needs to support and help in some form or another our Hispanic brothers and sisters who are not as fortunate as they are. We need to bring them into the loop. There's an interesting book by Hernando de Soto. He's a Peruvian economist. It's the mystery of capital and why it works in some places and not in others. And he talks about a group of people who are marginalized. In other words, they're, they're not in the fray, they're not in the mix. And his conclusion is that the people who suffer are not necessary. Well, they do suffer, but society as a whole suffer. Why? Because first of all, there's their own underground economy. They can't go to a bank to get money, so they borrow it among themselves, which means that banks are not getting any interest on loan payments, right? have their own form of justice sometimes. When they wanna get permits, it's so costly to get permits that they just open up illegally. Again, non-payment of taxes. Hernando de Soto's theory and idea, and I believe it's a very, very sound idea, is that when you bring these people in to the rest of the community, you then make, that, make the entire community much richer because they have more to contribute. 
And that's the whole purpose behind it. So although it may be some type of social experiment, it's really an economic experiment. It's really, we will benefit. And when I say we, not just the Hispanic community, society will benefit. I wanna place a call to action to all the Hispanics in the United States. Let's do what we can to unite. Let's look at our brothers and sisters who are not as fortunate as they are, as we are, and figure out what can we do to help make their lives better? Because in making their lives better, our lives are gonna be so much better. Let's start moving on this. Now is the time to do it more than ever before. You now have President-elect Biden who will probably have the most ethnically diverse cabinet ever. People are gonna be with open minds, much more open minds than in the past. Let's take advantage now. Let's unify, put our differences aside and help those within our community who need help and not just say, no, no, I'm sorry. I got mine and now you're not gonna get yours because I want the door closed. I've always said you get much more forgiving than taking. You get much more from giving than taking. Please, all the Hispanics in the United States, let's do our part. Let's unite and do the best we can. Thank you.